Hey guys, Will here. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at an important part of the SimuCube pedal ecosystem. This is the SimuCube passive throttle, I guess you could call it. I just call it the SimuCube throttle. But this is a passive device as opposed to the active pedals that we reviewed here just a couple of months ago. Now, I would encourage you to check out those review videos. We did an initial impressions video as well as a more detailed review video using those pedals. Just to give you the background information, I did actually end up purchasing three of those pedals. So I have the throttle, the brake, and the clutch all active pedal. But but I'm very interested nonetheless to check out what this passive throttle is like, how it compares, and whether or not I feel like the difference in the price between this and an active pedal makes a significant difference in the overall driving experience. So that's what we're gonna be covering today. Let's dive straight in. So before we kick off today, firstly, a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Micro Center. Now, if you're in the US, you're probably already familiar with Micro Center as a fantastic destination for all kinds of electronic gadgets, TVs, PC hardware. Pretty much if it's some sort of electronic gadget, chances are they sell it there. But what you might not be aware of is the fact that they also are now ranging a variety of sim racing products, which is expanding all the time. Now, this is particularly exciting for sim racers because it means you finally have the opportunity to get eyes on, or in some cases, even hands on, with a lot of the products that we review here at Boosted Media before you put down your money and actually buy one. They've also got quite a powerful rig building tool on their website as well. So if you're not sure what gear is gonna go well together and how to get started, that is a really great option. They've got a brand new store opening up in Charlotte in early 2024. And there's also some really great sales going on for fall right now as well. So links to all that stuff down in the description below and a big thank you to them once again for sponsoring today's video. So onto the SimuCube throttle pedal. Now, firstly, just to let you guys know, uh, SimuCube did send this across to us to check out. They have asked for the pedal back uh, once we're done reviewing it, unless we decide that we wanna buy it off them. So as I mentioned earlier, I have actually already purchased all three of their active pedals. So it's gonna be really interesting to see whether I feel like I wasted my money on that throttle pedal, whether I should have gone with something like this. Maybe I'll end up selling one of the pedals and buying this, I don't know, but that is exactly what we're gonna be finding out today. So it's important that you guys know that nobody has any sort of control over what we're saying in today's video. It's purely just my own observations and my own opinions. And of course, nobody gets to see the video before you guys do. Now, just so that you guys are aware as well, we do have some affiliate links with SimuCube as well as the other pedals that we'll be talking about in today's video. So if you are interested in helping us out at no additional cost, there are some links down in the description below, which are an awesome way of doing so. We do also have a 5% discount code available for SimuCube down in the description below as well, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you factor in the cost of some of this equipment, it is a significant difference. So let's dive in now and actually talk about pricing. This is a bit of an interesting one because the pedal itself, although a lot cheaper than the active pedal, is still quite expensive for a throttle pedal. So you're looking at just a touch under 340 euro for this pedal. And to put it in perspective, the uh, VNM pedals that we reviewed just recently here on the channel, they were just a touch over 500 euro, depending on where you purchased them from, for the entire three pedal set. And they were very, very good quality. There were a couple of add-ons that we did recommend for those which do add to the price, like the damper kits, for example. And that is one thing that we'll be touching on with today's review as well. Well, but yeah, when you when you consider what you're getting here for the price compared to some of the other options that are in the very competitive market as it stands at the time that we're making this video, it does still seem quite expensive for what it is, but obviously nowhere near as expensive as what something like the active pedal is. Now, the active pedal has a few obvious advantages over something like this. Advantage number one is that it gives you the uh, sensation of feedback inside the pedal itself. So it allows you to generate all sorts of effects and they've even added things like G-force effects to the pedals now, which is quite interesting. We might unpack that a bit more in a future video, but gives you force feedback sensation through the pedal. Look, in the time that I've been driving with my active pedals and I've have had them on the rig now for a good number of months as my daily driver setup, I don't tend to run many effects or if any effects at all on my throttle and clutch pedal. I purely just have the ABS effect kicking in on the brake. And I do find that to be extremely beneficial. But where I felt like the money was more justified for me was in the ability to make quick adjustments to how the pedal actually feels underfoot. So the throw range, the uh, amount of mechanical resistance behind the pedal, all those important things. Because I'm chopping and changing and driving lots of different cars quite frequently, that was worth it under my particular financial circumstances just for that benefit alone. 
alone, which was the reason why I chose to spend the money for that pedal. But for a lot of you guys, it would be extremely difficult to justify that kind of spend for you know something which isn't necessarily adding a lot to the actual experience of driving any one particular car. So that is kind of where the differences are between this and something like the active pedal, so that we're very, very clear right from the start here. So to give you the full picture in comparison there, uh, just a touch under 340 euro for the uh, non-active pedal, the passive pedal, you're looking at a touch over 2,150 euro for the active pedal as an add-on. So that's assuming that you already have your uh, brake pedal, which is a little bit more expensive because there's a few extra electronics that they include on the primary pedal. The add-on pedal is just a touch over 2,150 euro. So 2,150 versus 340 odd euro is a massive difference of course now just finally on pricing as well one other thing that has changed since we did our initial review of the active pedals is they have added this passive pedal to a bunch of various different bundles depending on what kind of configuration you want so there is a little bit of saving there so it's worth jumping on their website check out the link down in the description below and uh, have a browse of the various different configurations that they have available so let's take a more detailed look now at the pedal itself and how it works so as you can see very similar design overall uh, in terms of how the arm is designed and everything, how it all hinges to the active pedal. So it does blend in quite nicely on the rig as you guys can see here. An overall very high quality presentation. You can see nice thick aluminium throughout here. Very, very thick base plate here as well. No issues at all on the rig with flex or movement or anything like that. All the pedal arms and everything are all very, very solid. So the way this design is uh, functioning is very simple. You can see down in the bottom here, there's a little load cell. So it's actually using that load cell to determine the pedal position. And the way it does that, if we have a look in the side here, is there's a little arm coming off the back of the pivot here. And there's a little tiny spring inside there. As that spring compresses, it increases the amount of deflection inside the strain gauge on that load cell. That deflection is then interpreted as the pedal position inside the software, which is then passed through into the sim. Now there's a little RJ connection on the back of the pedal here, and they include a little pigtail cable like this guy just plugs into the back of the pedal here and then plugs into the back of your primary uh, active pedal. So it does assume that you have an active pedal. This isn't something you're gonna be purchasing to run on its own with other brand pedals, for example. So very simple in terms of how all that functions. And then in terms of the assembly here, again, quite simple. As I mentioned before, the push rod goes through. As we push the pedal down, you can see that goes through a little sleeve here, which has got some sort of a Teflon, I believe it is, coating on there, so it's not a hydraulic cylinder or anything like that, but it does give it a very, very nice smooth action. No binding, no sort of gripping or anything like that. Now that is one observation that we had with the active pedal. So it's worth mentioning underfoot, you do get a slight graininess and that's just a sensation of the screw mechanism actually winding in and out and moving the motor. So. It is something that I, I mentioned in the initial review. It's something that doesn't really bother me in driving. But having said that, this does feel a lot smoother underfoot than the active pedal does. So if that's something that you think is gonna be important to you, then it is definitely worth uh, worth considering at least. And then it's, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, the function, it's as simple as that really. One thing that I would like to see on the pedal at this price point is a adjustable damper. Uh, that is something that I've always kind of said historically, I didn't feel was particularly important, but I have changed my stance on that a little bit recently, just having experienced a couple of pedals that had really high quality dampers on the VNM pedals in particular, uh, that did genuinely add a lot to the experience of using the pedal. It just makes it feel a little bit smoother underfoot, adds a little bit more sensation. And although a lot of real life cars don't have anything like that on them, it just, it just felt nice and you know it didn't make me fast or anything like that. But at this kind of price point, it is something that I would like to see. So let's go through the various adjustments that are available on the pedal now. Now it does integrate in the software as you guys will see a little bit later on, uh, pretty much seamlessly along with the active pedal. So a lot of the same adjustments that you have there in terms of things like non-linear curves, for example, are all exactly the same as they are with the active pedals. You just obviously don't have adjustments for things like throw inside the software because they're all done mechanically on the pedal. So let's run you through all that now. So starting off with the throw adjustment here, this is actually a really nice design. So you've got this little orange collar here and what you do is you wind that in and out. So if we go towards the negative, you can see this little screw jack, I guess you could call it, or worm mechanism winds out. And that allows us to adjust between a minimum throw as we wind this out of 48 millimeters. So that is the maximum there. 48 millimeters and wound all the way out. That gives us a total pedal travel of 84 millimeters. Now I'm gonna just stop halfway there and just give you a look at the face here. You can see that little Teflon insert does actually bump up against this little piece here. 
and that gives us a nice high quality bump stop there. One comment that I do have though, is that it is quite noisy compared to some other pedals. So a lot of pedals utilize a uh, little stop within the mechanism down the bottom here. And often that's covered in some sort of a silicon or rubber material, which gives us a nice cushioned and uh, quiet bump stop. In the case of these pedals, both on the uh, full extension and on the return, they are quite noisy. Now that is exaggerated slightly by being on the table here. So I'll show you this again once we're over in the rig a little bit later on. So that is the adjustment in terms of pedal throw. I'm just gonna wind that out again quickly now. We also have an adjustment on the, uh, on the push rod here for our spring preload. So that can be wound in and out like so. Now you will notice here that if you wind the preload all the way out, the spring does actually become non-captive. So you can see there, it does produce a little bit of movement there, which obviously isn't something that you want. So you're never gonna wanna have that spring on minimum preload. Now, one other thing that I did notice here is that there isn't a little retainer nut on the top of this guy. Now, if you wind the preload in quite far, you'll notice that it does actually kind of almost bind up with the spring. So I didn't find that this was adjusting itself over time when I was driving with it wound in a little bit. However, with it wound out to close to the minimum, it did start to rattle around a little bit and work its way, way loose. So I found that if I had it at a minimum setting like this, if I was driving, then at the end of maybe a couple of hours of driving, it would work its way loose and start to move around like that again. So it is, you know, it's it's not a major issue. I'm, I'm sure that most people would find that if they just wind in a little bit of extra preload, it's not gonna move around too much and it won't create any issues, but I would like to see them include a little nut there just to uh, lock that into place. It's a complaint that we've had with quite a few pedal sets and uh, yeah, just something that seems a little bit unnecessary. So something I'd like to see them include, but no other major issues there. If you do wanna change the preload spring, they do actually include a weaker spring inside the box as well. Now, uh, look, neither of these springs are particularly stiff. Some people might want a slightly stiffer feel under the foot, but we'll talk about that when we're over on the rig a little bit later on. But if you do want to swap out the spring, this is a really nice system too. So all we do is we just unwind the little nut on the back here. That comes completely loose. And then we just move the pedal forward through the Teflon there. And then we can simply take off the little retainer there. That is a little bit stuck, but that's okay. It just pops off like so. Then we just pop the spring off. It can get a little bit stuck on the uh, on the spring perch there, but it just pops off like so. Set that guy aside, install the new one, put the retainer back on. And then this can be a little bit awkward. So we kind of need to bring this part up whilst holding this. It's all very awkward to do with one hand, but it's, it is doable. You just want to be very careful that you're not uh, damaging the Teflon here. So I'm going to kind of hold it with one hand, slide it through like that. And then that goes there. It all slots back into place. We push this down and then the little nut can go back on the backside again. So yeah, a little bit tricky to do with one hand, but not impossible. And uh, yeah, nothing I think really to complain about. And this spring as well as not providing as much resistance underfoot also feels a little bit more linear in response than this guy does. What you'll find with this spring, as, it's, uh, as it squishes up, the resistance increases in a, uh, in a more exponential kind of uh, fashion. So it gets stiffer the harder you press the pedal. Whereas with, with this guy, because it's more spaced out, it's never really fully compressing. So it just gives you that slightly more linear feel. So that is our preload, our spring change out, and our throw adjustment. We can then also adjust the force curve by moving the rod up and down within this little groove here. And then we have all the typical adjustments that you would find in terms of pedal angle and whatnot. So I'll just quickly run you through those. Uh, that gives me a good opportunity to show you the little bag that they include in the package as well with all kinds of mounting hardware. So they do include some T-nuts, some M6 bolts, as well as an Allen key and a little Torx key as well. So I'm gonna quickly loosen off these, uh, where should I do it? I'll do it here first. So. We'll loosen off the pedal pad. So with that loosened now, you can see it kind of clicks into each position, which is quite nice. So I'm actually gonna leave that on the, uh, on the middle position. I think that's probably gonna suit me best. And we'll wind that back in. Now we also have adjustment here for the angle of the face plate. So I'll quickly show you that too. Loosen that guy off and this guy a little bit as well. And with those bolts adequately loosened, you can hear it actually clicks 
into each position with a little ball bearing that snaps into place just like what we had with the pedal face. So little attention to detail things like that do let you know that it's a very high quality product. Obviously it's not something that you're gonna be adjusting often, but it does make a difference to the overall presentation and the feel of the product. And it does somewhat go towards justifying the quite expensive price tag that we have on this pedal for uh, you know for what the for the function that it's performing I guess so nice adjustments there I don't know why anybody would ever need to have an angle like that but you can if you need to let's pop that back down into the bottom position and just quickly tighten these guys off again and then lastly in terms of adjustment you also have this angle adjustment down the bottom here so again really nice spring loaded action into each position so there's no guessing here you can adjust it between one two three four five, six, seven different angle positions. So there's gonna be something there that's gonna suit everybody. Once you've got it in the right angle, you just simply lock it off exactly the same way using the provided Torx key. Should also mention as well, just like with the active pedals on the base plate here, you do have some slots, so you can slide it forward and back if you wanna have your pedals a little bit offset on the rig. But speaking of all that, let's get them mounted over on the rig now. We'll have a quick look at the software side of things and then talk about the overall experience. So all set up on the rig now, first thing I wanna just highlight here is the loudness of the uh, throttle pedal, because it is quite significant. I noticed it immediately as soon as I put it on the rig. So that's how loud I would expect it to be under normal kind of driving conditions. So you hear the bump stop at the end, as well as the return quite loudly. If I explosively release it, so just take my foot off it, you can hear it's like a huge clunk that actually reverberates through the entire rig, but that's not what you're gonna be doing when you're driving. Returning it like that is about where it's gonna be. Now, my threshold for calling this kind of thing out is usually if there's somebody sleeping in the next room or somebody trying to study or something like that, is it gonna bother them? If you're living in an apartment, is it something that's gonna bother them? With this pedal, I would say yes. If you've got somebody trying to sleep in the room next door, they're gonna complain about this instantly because it is gonna probably be the loudest thing on your rig. At this kind of price point, there's no excuse for that. They, they, it should be quieter than it is. So definitely something that I think they should improve on. But other than that, it feels very smooth underfoot. Uh, definitely immediately noticeably smoother than what we have with the active pedal. Remember with that grainy feeling that I was talking about before. So very nice feeling of smoothness underfoot. I was able to adjust my preload uh, with the stronger of the two springs to give me a feel that I like underfoot. Maybe a little bit on the weaker side compared to how I had the active pedal set up, but certainly not too weak. And uh, yeah, the pedal slides nicely under my sock as well. Absolutely no issues there. No binding, no flex, no movement, no nothing else. So it's literally just that noise that I think is a bit of an issue. Everything else is absolutely fine. So let's take a quick look at the software configuration here just to see how it integrates into the active pedal system because I think they've done a really good job of this. So this is a clean setup here. As you can see, it's detected my brake and my clutch, which are already set up on the rig, as you can see. And uh, you can see here down under unused device profiles, it's got the profile for my active throttle, which obviously isn't connected at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on add device and you can see it's popped up with passive pedal there. So we're gonna click on that. You can see now it says roll not selected. So we're gonna click on the pedal. We're gonna choose the port that we've connected to. So I've connected it to pedal port number one on the back of my active brake. And then we're gonna choose throttle as the function. So you can see, interestingly, we can configure it as a clutch or a handbrake as well as a brake if we wanted to. Don't see any reason why somebody would wanna have an active clutch or throttle but not active brake though. That just doesn't make any sense. Uh, we're gonna click on throttle, then gonna click on calibrate. We're gonna go all the way to the maximum, all the way back to the minimum, just do it a couple of times, and then press okay. And that will then give us our adjustment here for top and bottom dead zone. So you can see when I'm just resting my foot on the pedal, it is very, very, very sensitive. That's absolutely fine. But what I am gonna do is add just about a 1% dead zone at the bottom. That just ensures that if I'm resting my foot on the pedal a little bit, I'm not getting any throttle drag there. And then likewise at the top of the stroke, you can see if I push the pedal all the way to the maximum, but don't put any force behind it, it's actually resting a little bit below that 100%. And obviously we don't want to find a situation where we're not reaching 100% throttle. So I'm just going to add a little bit of dead zone at the top as well, just to ensure that when I've got the pedal pushed all the way to the maximum without putting pressure behind it, it is actually reaching 100% inside the sim. That is all we need to do in terms of configuration. They're gonna take my foot off, click save, make sure that we do indeed have all of our pedals not being touched at all, click on okay. And then if we want to, as I said before, we can set a non-linear curve here as well. So we've got the choice between linear 
and then curve. And exactly like what we saw with the active pedals here, you can set a non-linear response. So say for example, you've got a really high powered car that you wanna come onto throttle a little bit slower, you can set up a curve a little bit more like this, for example, and that is going to bring the throttle on a little bit more gradually in the early stages and then ramp up aggressively. Uh, conversely, if you're driving, say, something like a GT86 or an MX-5 and you want to have the throttle come on more aggressively, you can do something like this as well. We want to have it pretty linear. We want to have any secondary dips. So now you can see the throttle's coming on a lot more aggressively in that initial phase and then smoothing out just to allow us to get on that throttle a little bit quicker out of the corners, but I'm gonna go back to linear mapping. I never run a non-linear map on any of my throttle pedals, never have, probably never will. And uh, that is everything you need to know in terms of software, the brake and the clutch still work exactly the same way as they did before. And it all integrates very nicely. So let's move on now, talk about the driving experience. So let's quickly summarize the experience of using this pedal. Now look, as a standalone throttle pedal product, it does all the things that you would expect from a throttle pedal. I think it does a very good job. I really like the way they've made the adjustment uh, nice and simple for the amount of throw. That is something that you can just reach down and adjust between cars if you wish to do so. Obviously, we will need to calibrate the pedal, so just make sure you keep that in mind. But compared to a lot of other pedals that do require tools to make adjustments like that, and you know, even in some cases having to take the pedal off the rig to make those kinds of adjustments, this is a nice touch. In terms of other adjustments, all very straightforward, all very simple to do, and nothing really to complain about there at all. On the rig, installed as well, it does look very clean and it integrates nicely with the active pedal. So it doesn't look Look like you've got some cheap add-on next to your really nice expensive pedals. It's not going to leave you feeling like you should have paid that extra money every time you look at it or anything like that, which I think is important. But I think what people are going to be most interested in here is, is it worth spending the extra money on the active pedal over something like this? And look, honestly, as I touched on earlier, I've been using all three active pedals on my rig now. I did purchase them myself for a number of months now. I haven't found that I make a lot of adjustments to the throttle and the clutch pedal. I kind of just set and forget them, even though I have the ability to make those adjustments on the fly. You know, if I had my time again, now having seen this and having actually had hands-on and experience with this, I probably wouldn't have spent my own money on that active pedal for the throttle pedal. And I would probably go so far as to say that if they do release a pedal like this for the clutch as well, with some sort of a mechanism to give you that sensation of bite point, then that would probably be the road that I would go down as well. Now you can use this as a clutch pedal, but obviously you're not gonna have any sort of sensation of rollover point. So as it stands right now, I probably wouldn't recommend using this as a clutch unless you just really don't care and you just want something that you can press and you don't care what it really feels like. It is designed primarily as a throttle, even though you could use it as a clutch. So yeah, look, if I, if I had my time again, I would definitely have bought this as my uh, as my throttle pedal and just stuck with the active pedal for the brake alone i think and hope that they bring out a passive clutch pedal into the future now do i regret spending the money on the pedals no i don't i'm happy that i have them i've really enjoyed the experience playing around with them and getting to know them that's part of the enjoyment for me and i am in a privileged position here you know that we can justify as a business expense buying equipment like that purely for the sake of you know getting experience with it and being able to apply that experience in our videos to help you guys out so if it wasn't for that i probably wouldn't have forked out the money in the first place but for you guys I would say that, you know, unless having that adjustability on the fly is something that is extremely important to you, I don't really feel like, you know, the active pedal adds all that much to the driving experience over the throttle pedal. For the brake, obviously a different story altogether, but for the throttle pedal, not really a significant enough difference there. And this does have the advantage of feeling smoother underfoot than the active pedal does. Now, in terms of haptic feedback, as I touched on at the start of the video, I don't actually tend to run a lot of haptic feedback, if any, on my throttle pedal anyway. I'm more relying on just on ABS. What I found for me, and I did spend a good number of weeks really sort of experimenting and fine tuning and adjusting all this stuff. I found that having effects on my throttle and my clutch pedal just kind of confused me, added a little bit too much noise to the experience overall. I found that where I was actually gaining time overall was more just in that ABS effect on the uh, on the brake pedal. That was really what I found the most beneficial in terms of the uh, haptic feedback at least. And what I found is that when I added effects to the other pedals, it was kind of giving me a little bit of sensory overload and taking away from my ability to really get a sense of when the ABS was kicking in on the brake pedal. Now, obviously not everybody is gonna be the same in that regard, but that's been my experience now having used those pedals for an extended period of time. Now, as a lot of you guys will know, I do run a D-Box motion system with vibration on my daily driver rig as well. So I did actually experiment with switching that off to see 
see whether I still had those issues with sensory overload. And it didn't really make any difference to me at least in terms of what I was able to perceive through that feedback in the pedals. So I think whether or not you have motion probably isn't gonna be a major factor there. It's more just the sensation in your feet and you know really dialing into the effects that are gonna be most important to you. So again, it's just my experience. I can't speak for everybody, but that has been where I've kind of landed with it. I just run the ABS effect on the brake pedal. I haven't really ended up running any other effects on the throttle or the clutch pedal. So at the end of the day, I think it's pretty straightforward here. For the majority of people, I think that this is gonna be perfectly good enough and you probably don't need to spend the extra on the active throttle pedal. I just don't think that you're gonna get your money's worth out of that in terms of the additional benefit over the top of something like this. When you compare 340 odd euro to 2,150 euro, the extra benefit just is not there with the active pedal over something like this. And really, I think it's as simple as that. So at this point in time, at least, my recommended configuration for the majority of people would be passive throttle, active brake, and Look, really, I, when it comes to the clutch, I don't know whether they're planning on making a clutch pedal as well. They haven't shared any information with me, but I'm pretty confident that if they do end up releasing a clutch pedal, that would be my recommendation over active as well. I really just see the primary benefit of the active pedal being on that brake pedal and very difficult to justify the cost beyond that. So I really hope today's video has helped you out. Please do leave a thumbs up if it has. If you do want to pick up any of the gear that we've talked about in today's video, there are some links down in the description below, which is an awesome way of helping support our work here at Booster Media at no additional cost. So we really do appreciate your support there. Don't forget that 5% discount code linked down in the description below as well, because that is a significant saving on products that are this expensive. But above all, thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future reviews like this one. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.